Hello everybody, Frankie Day here for Frankie Day Models. Okay guys, this is Monday, Devil Feature Day for you. Later this evening I'll have the final reveal for the F6F Hellcat 124 scale by Airfix. Have that coming your way. <clears throat> There's much work I have to do in my job. It's kind of took me away from the bench for a while. That's why I haven't been making any videos uh, subsequently uh, for the last uh, couple of days or so. Well, I'll make two today. I vow that I finish up the Hellcat and the uh, the Lancaster. I'll be going on ship builds, which I will be. Well, I got another build I'm gonna take me with. I said, uh, "What the hey? I'm gonna give this thing a go." Uh, right now, we'll take this camera around over here and we'll focus on on the subject right here, guys. I'll explain what I'm here. Okay, this kid is no uh, no stranger. It's offered in two scales by this wonderful company: one seventy second scale and one forty eight. Now, consequently, I've built this thing in 172nd scale. I made a video of it. It's all been painted overall uh, dark black. <clears throat> Believe you me, uh, both kits are almost the same, identical, uh, identically in, in parts and, uh, and attention to detail and construction. There's a little more to this, because like I say, with, with a larger scale, you're going to add more parts to it. But 172nd scale is a little different, but it, it, it reminds me so much. Of, this, of the uh, of the uh, one seventy second scale of one of the things I built. Now this is the the, the Bristol Blenheim bomber, Mark One F. This is probably the early version. It came from the airliner version they had, the silver version. They had the the greenhouse type canopy on there, but the later version was the later model. It had a lot more a uh, pronounce of a nose section, like a bomb aimer's window right there. And instead of having everything done in the cockpit right here, so this is the first version of the uh, both of the Blenheim that came out. The Blenheim came out probably the very late 1930s, I'd, I, I imagine, <clears throat> right by the time when uh, Hitler uh, attacked Poland back in 1939. I think this thing came out about 38 to 37. It was actually designed as a civil aircraft, but war element crap going on, so the, the militarists figured this thing a nice little bomber, which it was. But it was actually uh, uh, the forerunner of the of the bomber fleet to the Halifax bombers and the air and the uh, Lancasters, which were they held uh, air superiority of the bombing. But these things here were very good aircraft. They were fast. They get in really quick, get out, and they had this share of problems too. They had the bungee cord type bomb bay doors on the bottom. Sometimes they had a gun pack on here. Now, this kit gives you the same features of that as the one seventy second scale little cousin of Airfix. It has a gun pack right there that fits beneath the belly right there. And it has an open bomb bay too. But this here has has the same treatment, but it has but the only difference is from the 172nd scale kit, like I remember from building it, is that it don't have a bomb bay door of uh, a section uh, that fits that closes off the, the open bomb bay with the scribe bomb bomb bay doors. Well, I mean my bungee doors. That noise you're hearing, guys, they're testing the tornado horns out there. They do this every round the first of the month. Uh, no test patterns here. Just a customary monthly uh, test for the uh, tornado sirens. So we hear that in the background. That's it. Anyway, like I was saying on the bungee doors, they have bungee cords. The weight of the bomb, at least the bomb, the bombs that fall through, the doors will snap up immediately. They went like this, worked like this all the time. Instead of having the hydraulic bomb bay doors that open up like most of them do, they come up like that. But they had little bungee cords on there or something. Uh, it's a weird looking mechanism, but you got to realize this was a silver aircraft. It wasn't designed to be a bomber. And so the RAF, they had to do something quick to, to, to convert SAME into a bomber. So like I say, that's, that's kind, of a, kind of a queer bomb bay system that they had, but that's what it was on the bomb, on the uh, bomb bomber. And... Uh, they're a very good aircraft. A lot of pilots that, that flew these things love these ships. They're good. Now, like I say, but they had their share of problems. And uh, like all aircraft did. But that's all they had. The beginning of the war came up. You know, they, they had Ansons. They had these. They had the uh, Manchester bombers. And they had the uh, uh, the other ones, too. Uh, what's another one? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, the Whitley bomber. And also, believe it or not, in the beginning, or late, they even had the 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 the, the, the Hadley Page. Uh, I get the name of it. It's a biplane with two engines on it. Uh, it's Hayford bomber. 
Please excuse me, fellas, for that blunder right there. It was a hatred bomber. It was used actually in the beginning, and they said, this thing is too obsolete. We can't use this. And by that time, the lease program came in, and the United States of America, uh, under, the, uh, under the act of Franklin D. Roosevelt, and him and uh, Winnie, Mr. Sir Winston Churchill, they were very, very close friends. They were very close together. And he knew that England needed help. But a lot of things he couldn't do politically, but things he could do from his heart. And so, look, we'll give him destroyers. We'll give him these Hudson bombers, Baltimore bombers, Venom bombers, Boston bombers. We'll give him all these old bombers that we don't want. And we find out the English um, made better progress out of them than what we could have. And we learned a lot from the English. Well, heck, these things are good for coastal command. Why don't we just use these like the English do? See, we didn't think of stuff like that. England always had a plan for... Uh, uh, for how to, how to use the aircraft. Because like I say, that's all they had at the time until the Lancasters came in. Sterling bombers and the rest and, uh, and everything else in history, but these were pretty well used. Okay, I bought this at Smitty's Hobby Shop. I must have bought this, oh, good gravy. Last year. Every bit of last year, 2019, I bought this. I don't know how long this thing has been on the market. I surmise about a year, maybe two at the most. I don't know. But I have built the 172nd scale. Like I said earlier in the video, both these kits build precisely the same, but there's a little more parts to this because it's a larger scale. Gives you right here two options of, of painting. You've got a painting leaflet back here. They got one right here. This is Bristol Blenheim uh, Squadron from number 23 Squadron. Royal Air Force, wintering Cambridge, England, February 1940. Scheme currently applied to the Great Britain uh, Six Flying Aircraft Restoration Company in Duxford. So I imagine you got one of these, a copy of these in Duxford. Anyway, that's a paint schedule. It's customary black undersides, and you got dark earth and uh, dark green on top. And they gave you the humble colors out here. It's all humble colors here. And this is the other option. This is the one I painted in the 172nd scale, all black. Now, here's a little tip, fellas. Now, these got good recessed panels. They love washes. They're in love with washes. And washes love this. After this thing is painted black, gloss this thing up really well. Gloss up to so glossy, it's, you can see yourself, you can almost shave. Now, make yourself a white wash. Then put your white wash on it. They rub it up with a Q-tip with a with a, with a paper towel or a rag, whatever it is, keep it clean, and you'll, those those rivets will pop up, buddy. They'll pop up. All those beautiful looking recessed lines, all the detail, they'll pop up. So I painted the the black one first one. That one, matter of fact, what scar that one came from? Let's see. That's probably a night train, training unit. This is number five four operational training unit, Royal Air Force. Uh, a church, uh, church Fenton, North Yorkshire, England, December 1940. So this was actually a training squad I'd used. So like I said, I'm going to paint mine this color. I located another bottle of uh, the last of my Model Master Dark Earth. And I got some Model Master. I got some uh, Dark Earth also in a humble range. Okay, uh, the instructions here are... I just completed this step right here, the undercarriage. Just like I say, this uh, the instruction sheet is this customary air fix in booklet form. It's wonderful here, like I say. But there's options. Pay attention to the instructions, although would you make a boo-boo? Uh, how many steps to complete this model? I'll tell you exactly how many steps. It'll take 116 steps to complete this thing. And I don't think there's any options on this thing. Unless it's bombs or a gun pack. You can make it the bomber version, or you can make it the uh, like a gunship type of aircraft. It has flaps on it. They're they're optional, either up and down. So I just finished. I I built this thing. Not I tinkered with it for about three days. It took me three days to get this far. Now we'll move the box and we'll see the plane. Okay. I got the old undercarriage uh, assemblies here done. 
These go inside the wings now. They fit right in here about like A. About like that. You can try the carriage hanging out. Very nice. I dry fitted this thing. Now, here's a here's an answer to a, to a problem that arises a fit issue. There was a couple guys that built this thing. I think it was uh, Alex Models. He, that was his entry for um, I believe the UK Models uh, uh, National Pride Group built. Yeah, precisely. I watched it the other day. And he had a, a problem when they close up the fuselage. It's awful tight in here, guys. It's very tight. These kits are, in my eyes, and my experiences, these things are over-engineered. But they're, but they're good. If you make everything fit by making sure all the parts are good. Now, the problem here, the fit issue they had, they said the problem was the Bombay, right in this Bombay right here, this is a bomb, Bombay version. You had your bombs, you had your budget type landing gear doors, Bombay doors. Now, if I can get in that box, I may be able to get that bottom, that bottom plate I was talking about now. Let's see if I can find that. The center section of that mob bay. There's only way I can explain this. Oh, here it is, right here. Right in view. Alrighty now. We got over there. Here. Okay. This here is your Bomb Bay. It's already been recessed right here. You got Bomb Bay doors here. I think it was about two of them, about three of them in here, four of them on here. Like I say, they're bungee kind. Like that, when the weight of the bomb will, it will go through the Bomb Bay when they release the bomb. And the Bomb Bay is automatically stamped up because of that bungee cord. They didn't engineer no hydraulic Bomb Bay doors. The aircraft virtually was obsolete before the war even got started. But it proved itself a very war, uh, airworthy uh, machine. So they had to think of something fast, and they did. Now here's a problem right here. Is this Bob Bay right here? They say when you push it in, it bows out, and the out outer edges don't. It, when you pull, when you pull your your fuel size together, this side here is too tight on the side here. This let me pull this out for you guys so you can see on what thing he's talking about. That comes off. Nothing glued in here. All dry fitted. This Bob A4, this unit right here where the cockpit goes into and everything, has got to be sanded. You've got to sand this down probably a couple, of, I don't know, I'd say maybe about five, five thousandths on each side of the uh, floor. That way, when they join a the fuselage, the fuselage will fit naturally flush in, all parts will fit flush. But remember, these things are new tool kits. These things were designed to put together exactly. And they're supposed to without having anything pushing out because that will interfere with the fit of this. So when you do on the sides, when you glue these things, when you glue this in here, I haven't painted nothing yet, guys. I just right then this thing assembled everything. The paint will be added later. But at this point of the video right here, I'd like to, to be able to express and show you the problem here why you have a tight fuselage that interferes this part here. Once this part's glued in, it bows out more this way, and you got to fill in inside the fuselage, and you don't want to do that. Like I say, these kits are a new tool, and they're, they're designed for everything to fit precise. And anything that interferes that fit will interfere the fit of the part. So you, that's why I say it's always, always very, very, very uh, advisable to dry fit everything before you glue it together. Now, the best way to sand this down is you can take it the back of your number 11 blade like I did right here that's what did this I'll do it over again just as a, as a as a as a sample here because that's what it is when you close that fuselage up it hits up right against right against here and it causes the fuselage to bow out then when you put this part in it'll be like an uneven fit it won't fit right so like I say, these dual tweak kits are, are designed to put together exactly the way they're designed. Concise. Nothing must not interfere with that fit apart. Sometimes you may run into a part they over-engineered didn't, didn't see it. 
but these things here, the Airfix has really got their game together. They really, uh, they really, it's so advanced now compared to how their earlier kids back in the late fifties and sixties, you know, because they were almost toyish, you know, back in the, those days. But we didn't look at them as toys. I don't look at them as toys now. If you saw it fits great up here, guys, I don't see no filler at all. Just right here where it's tight at right here, because it's, it's the uh, fuselage floor of the Bombay that pushes it up against. Now, <clears throat> you got detail right here. It's these little flanges right there, that ribbing right there. You got, it, it comes up like this, now it comes flush. That's where the, the, the Bombay door rests on. Make sure this is pushed down flush so it fits on top of that. In other words, it rests up against the ribbing, it'll push the sides out. Then you'll have problems putting this on. Then we put this on, you'll have fit issues. Right there, see it right there in the corner there? That's what it look like. When it's all pushed in, when it's, when it's, when it's all like supposed to be, be like that. When you sand down both sides of that, that fuselage, uh, that, that the Bombay sides on there. I got the wings all done. I got them uh, all out, sanded down, ready to glue together. I got a paint here. I got an airbrush, the interior colors. That'd be number 78, interior green, and the humble variety. And right here, I got the bottom wing, like I say, with the, the sub -sendly. These things are very difficult, so you got to be very careful with these guys. Pay special attention. When you assemble these here, because these things are very, uh, uh, they get confusing. So you got to watch yourself. I follow the instructions very much. So tonight I'll probably, uh, when I finish up the uh, the Hellcat, I'll resume on this. I'll do some painting on here. And do some more fitting right here, the fuse stock here. I think I got pretty much down like the way I want it. A little more sanding down there. I'll just pull the whole thing out and do it over again. Because I want it to fit just like this here. It should fit like that. No muss. Instead of forcing it together. When you force it together, that means there's something pushing up against it. That's got to be corrected before you close up the fuselage. Right now, I just need to... I know exactly what the problem right here is. It's got to be over here. Here we go. It fits good. Like that. Like I say, you got to push that Bombay, make sure it fits and flush on top of those uh, those ribbing inside your Bombay wells. Like I say, always check your parts. Okay, a sneak preview of the Hellcat over there. She's coming along. We'll get back to yours truly here. Okay, that concludes video number six. No, well, yeah, number, number six, actually. <laughs> that concludes the video number one. For my another build I got going on, uh, my uh, Airfix 148 Blender Bomber. I'll be on the Lancaster tonight, do some sanding of that, and I'll be able to do some priming on that night. Uh, I'll prime that black tonight on an undersize, get that uh, get that all done, ready to go, and uh, put some primer on there. I got the ball of SLs all sanded down, so all we have to do is go ahead and add some primer to it. So she goes. That'd be about it. Okay, the same thing, so stay posted. I'll have the final reveal for, for the Airfix 134 scale Hellcat. I just wish I had a better camera and a better scenery, you know, than here. And here just does, doesn't, does, it doesn't do any justice. You know, you just, I'm out in back behind my trailer. I think I located a nice spot out here. It's very serene. Uh, no one can hear you talking to yourself. And I'm thinking about uh, taking some pictures out there, but I can't do that until I get the uh, get a camera. And that's one of the biggest problems I got right now. I can't make a quality videos because I don't have my my camera. So this thing here is a purely webcam that I bought, hooked up my computer, and what you see is what you get. And uh, it's pretty pretty uh pretty high fidelity pictures. That's not bad, but I miss my camera. Well, that's about it for today, guys. So, uh, so stay posted for the final reveal. <coughs> and I'd like to thank 
all my wonderful subscribers, and all my commenters, and your wonderful candor on my bills. I'm sorry I haven't replied to some of them. I've been too busy working lately, so I got back and started checking up and do my homework. I get my homework done. And uh, that's keep you guys, let you guys know I, I, I read your, your comments, and I'd like to thank everybody. And um, so this will be a busy week for me in modeling, so I'll, I'll have probably about two or three more videos coming up. I'll have the, the final reveal of the Lancaster, It'll probably be later on this week sometime. And I got my two spots put these, that's about all I can do in here. And everything else is going to have to be built here and uh, take it back to the uh, storage. That's the only downfall about living in a trailer, knows. Or it's a modeler's hell, but I gotta do what I gotta do until things get better for me. And things jolly well. I always keep God in prayer all the time, so God, please help me find a better place, you know. And, and I will get a better place. I just, uh, like I say, guys, all open, it's no heart, no candor, and everything. It just, it just ain't my lifestyle of living in a place like this. This is nice for an elderly person like me and his wife. We have no hobbies. We want to go somewhere and live without having the outcome, outcome of too much work around the house and stuff, and and uh, not to worry about things, you know. And that's actually was actually designed for it. Something, something simple. But you know, this is home for now, and things will get better. I know they will. God helps those who helps themselves. So I'm help myself the best way I can. Okay, this is Frankie Day signing off Frankie Day Models. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank all my wonderful new subscribers and all my other subscribers. I love you guys very much. And thank you very much for your wonderful, wonderful comments. And thank you for viewing my videos. I'm very honored to you fellas. I got a lot more. We're going to start having some hangouts coming up once I get my camera going on here and get get, get everything settled in this here trailer until I get a place. I'm going to start... I'm going to start... Uh, building some big stuff and some small stuff and everything else and <laughs> right back to the storage it goes but at least i'm i'm keeping busy and I, it's, it's all built and i know what's in the safe place okay this is frankie day sign off frankie day model stay posted for the airfix 124 scale s6f5 hellcat she'd be shaking your way this evening so stay posted for that guys this is frankie day sign off frankie day models god bless you guys and we'll catch you guys uh this evening. Bye, fellas.